watch Snatch. Really, really good film. What a crack! Hello film, and mate. welcome to the Red Report, Barnsley FC's longest-running podcast, and we are proud to be part of the Talksport Fans Network. It is Saturday evening, nigh on six o'clock. A great result today for the Reds away at Wigan, and, and well, let's go straight to one of the goal presenters of this evening. His name tonight is Ole Makete. It is, of course, Reds Report. Ian, Ian, just sum that up for us. Performance, result, what does this mean? Is doom and gloom over? Can we announce promotion? Where are we? <laughs> oh, no, feet on the ground. Um, <laughs> ole, ole. Anyway, um, yeah, we've, got a, we've got a new hero in town. Uh, he might have missed a sitter and open net, but he, he did the business with a second goal, uh, Mackety. I think it, it it was a good good performance in patches. Um, yes, everybody will point to the, the red card, but I think before the red Card Wigan looked quite average. They didn't look the they looked a shadow of the side that put four past Bolton. And I just felt we I don't think anybody expected that performance from Barnsley. I think after the, the, the two home defeats, uh pessimism was around massively and, and that was a, a, a decent performance that today. And really, if truth be known, we should have finished that game off with 20 25 minutes to go. We missed a few chances. And uh but I think it, if if nothing else, it's perked everybody up in the stands and uh, in the squad as well. That was a, was a cracking victory that today. Um, Steve, welcome to you as well, of course. Um, listen, when the team sheet came out um, on social media and obviously the biggest absentee, Liam Kitching, uh, apparently got injured playing games or in training or whatever. Um, a few weeks ago, there was a reported bit of three million for him. Do we accept that now? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> That's easy, wasn't it? That was an easy question. That's um, question, Danny. <laughs> I've got next question. I gotta be honest, when I saw team come out, I were gutted. Absolutely gutted. Because I'd done my fan up and I've obviously got loads wrong, so that were a bit disappointing. Um I'm not surprised they didn't play him today, whether he's injured or not. Um and to be honest, we didn't miss him. I thought Shepard certainly played well enough, if not better. Um uh, he, he looked very composed on ball. Um, all right, he seemed to knock quite a lot of long balls forward, but I'm just guessing that's how they've told him to play. Get it, get it downfield. So that were that were fair enough. So um, in a way, it wasn't a surprise. Kitchen weren't playing, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm as I say, I'm glad it wasn't. Uh, I think Williams is still wrong man to get captaincy to. Uh, you looked at Wigan's captain. Uh, I mean, I watched it. And the commentators had nothing but praise for him, and rightly so because he he, were, he, he led by example. And I don't normally talk about opposition players, but what a, what a performance he put in, um, and that's the sort of captaincy that you want to see. And to be honest, that's the sort of captaincy that I want to see at Barnsley. Um, so I hope there's somebody's going to step up and take that mantle. And um, so. Obviously, from a playing point of view and a performance point of view, because we said it before, Ian, sometimes it's harder, isn't it? Sometimes when you start playing against 10 men, it can become you know, almost more difficult to break them down because their, own, their onus is more on maybe defending you know, and not conceding rather than scoring goals. Um, Callum Styles missing as well today. Um, obviously, uh, you know, one, one, one of the substitutes. That's another one. Do you do you do you accept the bid if something comes in now? Because potentially there's, there's there's a few quid on the bench that didn't start today. That if there is interest, do you let him go? Yeah, I mean, he, he looked lively when he came off the bench. Um, seemed really determined to try and get a goal, but he hasn't done much in the last couple of weeks. Um, You'd think really he'd walk into that side and, and shine head and shoulders above everybody else. But I thought he hasn't the last couple of weeks. So again, if, if the right bid comes in, then maybe we we, we take the money and uh, say thanks very much and we move on. Steve, where there is a bit of competition in places now, isn't there? When, when, when you look at like, uh, you know, obviously McAtee coming in, uh, Shepard playing, what do do we need? We don't let, let's talk Max Waters. Obviously, Cole gets another goal. Cole is the reason for the sending off, and I don't think you can um, criticize the performance and the shift that 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 you know Cole puts in 
week in, week out because he is an ever-present and he's, he's scoring goals. Is it five this season so yeah, far? Five in five, isn't it? Yeah. His strike partner, uh, Max Watters, uh, is he still getting the hang of the Barnsley way or is he a bit off the pace? Or Because we've we, we not really seen anything from early on the season, I know, but is, you know... Do you now say, well, McAtee came on and within so many minutes he scored? Do you, do you give him a chance or do you stick with Waters? Well, I mean, the thing with Waters is he, he, he did, he did. Is there, is there a Piper in background? Like near a Sorry Piper? Are you in Belfast? Oh, he's put on mute now so he can tell, tell there. He's telling there last now. Put that bloody pipe down, you stupid <laughs> woman. Sorry. Yeah, I never know when I'm on mute, right? So, bloody man, Freddy's just got up the street. Do the <laughs> playing his Oh, get me a 99. <laughs> Strawberry yeah, and sprinkles, please. He's got, he's got, a, got a flake in mine. <laughs> yeah, good go. I got, have you got any hundreds and thousands? Um, yeah, so Caravan. <laughs> I, I ain't got that much. I've just bought a caravan. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes, um, no. I, apologies for that. I'll, I'll no, you're now. right, mate. I, I enjoyed it. I was doing Irish jiggy. I mean, legs were going 10 to a dozen. Um, Player player wise, yeah, we've got a little bit of competition now for, for places. Um I still think we could do with an experienced centre half, another centre half. Uh especially if Kitchen is gonna go. Because I just all right, we've got McCarthy to come in. Not really had much of a look because he were injured last season. Kunde yet to be proved that he can play football. Midfield wise, I, I you know, we you look on paper. And we've got a really good midfield. But, to, I mean, I watched that today, obviously. Kane put himself about a bit more t today, which was a definite improvement from last week. Uh, Russell, some nice touches, got stuck in. Still strikes me as being slow for a big man. Um, it's like turning a bus at times, but he played fairly decent today. Still question marks for me against Phillips in midfield. Um, he did a couple of things today, but he just he gets lost. Uh, didn't hear his name mentioned very much, especially in first half. And for me, he just gets he just gets lost. Uh, don't do a great deal for me. I mean, striker wise, let's face it, we've got five strikers now, never before known. But take Devante Cole out of it, and you know, you you just you just don't know what what your your next strike partner is. And you're saying that Waters never got a look in last season. Well, if you take him out now and put McAtee in, well, he's not got a look in again, has he? Do you know what I mean? Um, so, he, you know, he, he put himself about a bit today. A couple of decent runs, some nice touches. Maybe it is going to take him a bit longer, but I think he needs that time. You can't just write him off after after three or four games and say, oh, yeah, McAtee is going to be the great saviour. Hopefully he is, you know, but... Uh, it, it's interesting with the strikers, isn't it? Because Ollie Shaw wasn't even on the bench, and I think that... They're um, with McAtee coming in, and he's on a, he's on loan, so you'd like to think they're going to play him. Luton are going to want him being played, aren't they? Yeah. Um, so, and he's had that great start today. Maybe Shaw goes out, maybe he goes on loan. I, I can't see him keeping because he he brought Aidan Marsh on, didn't he? And give him a few minutes as well. Yeah. And Aiden, um, that few minutes that he played as well, he played really well. He did he really he well. Did. That looked really lively. I thought all the subs who come on today um, did really well. Corey O'Keefe looks looks. I really like the look of him at right wing back. Um, yeah, but you can't you can't knock Cotter. Cotter no, had a really good game no, said, today no. and at cross foot, foot goal as well. Yeah, I thought he I played say, really, think, really well. No, I was saying to Carlo off air, I said I thought he had a great game. I think he probably just run out of steam at the end because he absolutely yeah. busted gut. And I thought he was, for me, he was one of our top, top seven or eight out of ten for me today, Cotter. But I just think... Collins was probably thinking, let's just shore up that, that right-hand side and, and he's probably run his race. But I like the look of O'Keefe as well. So, again, like what Carl was saying earlier, competition for places on that right-hand side, on that side, is really good. Yeah. Um, but I think maybe Shaw might go out on loan, maybe. He's just, we've just not seen it, have we? And he's been here a, a, a few months now. Yeah. Do, do you agree, Eddie, with Steve, that, you know, centre-half is, 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 is probably a must? But are we also looking for a leader? Not only just a player to fill a gap, yeah. but... Because today, whilst the performance, you know, you you, you can't knock the results, and uh, you know, to break a side like a side like Wigan down, fantastic. I, I, I sometimes you look around and you wonder who who is the leader, who who is the yeah. person that gets them going, or that keeps a player calm when they, you know, seeing red. Or, um, because f from all the players you've got now, 
it's difficult, isn't it? Cadden is, a, is I, 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 I like Nicky Cadden, but I don't mm. necessarily see him as a captain material. No. Um, we had this discussion last year. Do you want your Do you want your captain at the back, one of the back four? Well, that's going to be hard because they're almost all new players. Do you want him as a striker? I don't know if the Van Fickle is a, is a captain, or no. do you look in the midfield so they're involved in both? But then is Herbie Kane, you know, a, a, a future captain no. for you? Is, is for Phillips? Because I know that's the choice no. for Steve. Is Phillips? Not for me, no. <laughs> no, I think I think I think right through for, right through the squad, they are all very much of a muchness. The players. Um, this our leader's gone. He's gone to Luton. Mads Anderson. He was the one who was the vocal one, or he 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 cajole people through again, put an arm around him, or bollock him. We, the rest of them are all very similar. Yeah. Certainly, I wouldn't give it Cole. Cole's quite quiet on the pitch. I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong. He he, he, he gets, gets results and he does his work, doesn't he? But he yeah, does yeah. his job as a striker, but he's not a captain. Um, they're all very similar. There's no, there's no one that you would you would say he's a go-to player, but we do need that leader. Definitely that, that leader. I'm hoping, well, you probably would say it would be Luca Connell. He's probably the most vocal, but he's not around, is he? Um, he would probably be my vote, Luca Connell, because it, on, when he crosses that white line, he becomes that animal and he yeah. will um, do what, what I suppose that, that old fashioned captain of somebody who roll his sleeves up and give a bit of a fist pump and he'd help mm. players through the game. So it'd be Connell for me, but obviously it's a bit worrying that he's he's way off the being in the starting. It makes you wonder whether um, whether Lapata could be, you know, yeah. not, not this he's season, but maybe he, he, he could be a future one because he's obviously got yeah. that drive and that passion. Yeah, like you he's, said probably that. Near, he's probably the nearest that would fit that mantra. Yeah. yeah. Um, you look then at uh, the fixtures because we've got uh, next week is Cheltenham Town, isn't it, on, on the Saturday? Um, and, and listen, there are no easy games. I think the level with us on points at the moment. Then you've got a week off because of the Portsmouth um, postponement because of international players, and then you've got Burton, Albion, Northampton, and then Blackpool. And, and Blackpool started off quite good, but then sort of dropped off again. The uh, the, the transfer window shuts as well. Uh, end of this end of this week. It's an ideal opportunity, isn't it? Because on paper, and I know we're early in the season. You, you look at these and you think this is at the end of September, we should be nearer top five than sort of like mid table where, where we are now. Um, what about Collins, um, Ian? Do, can you see him? Can you see his plan, his vision on the pitch? Can you see how he adjusts things when, for instance, you know, they they they, they had a man sent off? Can you see is he is he is he is he vocal? What 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 what, can, what have you made of him so well, far this season? Today, I, I I kind of kept a bit of an eye on him, actually, because you couldn't miss him in his light grey jumper. He stood out amongst everybody else. And to be fair to him, he he did, he was shouting at his, um, I think it was at Shepherd in that second half, because they started quite well in that second half. Half time come at a bad time for us. They kind of got in and re recouped together and come out and played a bit better in that second half. And he was were, he were really sh- shouting him and, and telling him where to be in that p- them, them centre-halves. And um, and he was going to John Stead and, and Devaney quite a lot. And um, you could see he was looking at 55 minutes. He was looking at making a sub. So, yeah, he was very, very all over that performance today. Um, I like what he comes out and says um, when he speaks. He speaks well in, in uh, um, press conferences. You just got to give it. He's, he's just going to have time. And he, he really needs yeah. a couple of wins under his belt. Yeah. yeah. He's a bit of pressure. Yeah. And 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 Steve, when when you look at the fixtures coming up, those wins, you know, are achievable, aren't they? Because this will have really, you know, hopefully, you know, got them on the up. It's always good to start a new week after, especially going away and keeping a clean sheet. Um, but you mentioned earlier about you know a centre half. What about outgoings? You, you mentioned Shaw. Shaw might be going. You talk about Aidan Marsh. Is Aidan Marsh ready for League One football, or would he benefit from maybe going to League Two and playing? No, League no, what, no. What players? What players have we got that you think would rather than you know the occasional you know maybe substitute appearance or being part of the squad? What what players do you think for their own perform for their own development um, should maybe go out on loan at the end of this window? Well, I, th- I think permanent moves will be well probably Kitchen and, and Styles maybe. I mean, you never know. We might end up with Styles while January if he wants to. If he wants to put a shift in, which is which is you know which is great if he will. 
Um, loan wise, Aidan Marsh, from what I've seen of him, no, let's keep him around first team. Let him let him breathe in that atmosphere. Let him learn. Um, as a striker, I mean, he's got John Stead there, who, who you know, were quite a prolific striker in his day. Let him learn from him and, and get involved. It's all right for me sending younger younger players out on loan if they're going to sort of the right mm-hmm. club, that they're going to learn something. It's no good just shooting them out somewhere just for, I don't know, will you, will you play him for 30% of his time and just come back after kicking ball twice? Sometimes I just don't think it works. It's as though it's a waste of a waste of time when the, you know, our, our, our academy's, you know, really good. We produce some really good players. So, personally, I'd, I'd I'd keep I'd keep him keep him there. But like you said, for sure, he obviously don't fit in. To be honest, else he'd have played before now, or he'd have had a look in more before now. So maybe he's another one that could go. Um, but no, the the players that I've seen up to now, you know, keep keep him there, keep him round first team. Let's let's bring him through. Let's not let somebody else have him or somebody else have a look at him. Let us let us uh, benefit from there learning. Bit of an enigma, isn't it, Ian? Ollie Shaw. Because he, he came in, never really got a run. But like today, when, when you have to think, like when somebody like, and I don't mean this disrespect, but Ada Marsh is a, an academy graduate. I know he's had some minutes with us. Get it completely. Yeah. But you would have thought that, you know, a, a striker that's had a couple of seasons, that, that's got some EFL matches under his belt, would, would get the nod. Um I always wonder what it is because recruitment has been overall. I know people will always knock, but it's we've not had many signings that we haven't seen, except for the two Belgians. But the least we say about those, the better, because that was in a different era. But most of the signings we brought in are playing and 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 yeah. do reasonably well. You know that that spreadsheet, as we call it, obviously works. So I wonder, you know, was it was it a formula error? Is it, does the lad find does he find it hard to settle up north? It's it's so. It's, I always wonder why when somebody's been brought in and it's like we signed all the show. Ooh, and we've just not seen him. And when we have seen him, it's yeah. not really set the world on fire, has he? No, and you look now, there's two managers that have had a look at him. Mm. And neither of them have played him. Even Collins has had a bit of time looking at him. And he's not played him. Or or, or only bit parts. And he's he's clearly down the pecking order. So you you've, you start to wonder, what is it? Is it the player himself? Is it? Is it? They must have seen something in The club must have seen something in him to sign a two-year contract. Um, but yeah, for two managers to have a look at him now, and he's and he's way down the pecking order. And I would suggest now we, I know McAtee's alone, but he's alone till the end of the season. We're going to get a full season out of him. Yeah. Um, and they sign Waters permanently, and Cole's always going to be the go-to striker. Then um, I, I, I just think he's on borrowed. I can see him going out in this window, even if it's just on loan, just to. I think question money. question is though as well, who brought him in? Because he came in during Duff's reign. It makes you wonder whether somebody else has, has, has spied him and thought, yeah, we'll have him. We are actually consulting manager at time because Duff never mm. fancied him, did he? So mm. you're back to that old question of who's picking these players? Are they just coming off a spreadsheet? Is there somebody behind scenes pulling strings? Um, I think this is, again, these are these are the questions that should be asked. Um, not, not about tea but, and coffee. <laughs> but not about tea and coffee and toilets. You know, but, like, you know what? I, and it's funny you mentioned that because I was going to say... Tea and coffee and toilets? Yeah, the toilet's just there. Tea and coffee's oh, are on the way. Um, beautiful. No, but what, what I was going to say was, you know, when Norwood left and everybody was, oh, that's it, and we're not going to do this, we're not going to do that, and then we've just beat Wigan, who beat Bolton 4 0 last week. So we recorded just before the fans forum last week. Um, because I've been away, we've not recorded this week, hence we do it now. Um, and I, I listen. I get because I don't. I don't want people to get the wrong opinion. I get that disabled toilets are really important, but I just my first thought was ring the club. You know, if something's broke, don't mm. wait for a forum in two or three weeks' time. Ring the club. Ro- walk in and say, "I need the disabled toilet that was not working." So I wouldn't necessarily wait for a, uh, mm. a, a, a you know a fans a fans forum. Al, you know, Al Alan Smith doesn't drink tea or coffee and he wanted in front of him. I get it. I get it completely. Ring the club. For me talk though, Carl. Talk, talk to the supporters trust who organised yeah. the fan zone. So, and I just felt that all this anger towards order and all this, well, and then the people over there, I thought it was all very tame. And I actually came off because I switched off after a while thinking the board must be thinking 
Well, what are they all? All this criticism and all, what, what are they? For me, Carlo, it was potentially, you've got to remember some of the board members have flown halfway around the world yeah. to stand there in front of the fans and front up, which is fair play to them, yeah. 200 of them. Yeah. And it was you, it was probably some people's one and only chance that you'll ever get to hold your board to account for something and you are asking about tea and coffee in the fan zone or, or gazebos or something like that. And it just, I just shook my head. I, and, and, and I get it, everybody's got entitled to their opinion, but you you one chance to speak to people who live halfway around the world who've come and come there, flown in and said, right, give it us. What's your gripe? What do you want to ask us? And we got some absolutely pathetic questions. I think yeah, the thing I, for me, the thing for me was it would just, it were embarrassing. It was. It really was embarrassing. You got all the grief and all the venom on Twitter weeks before about your secret meetings and all this, and they've got a fans forum there. Admittedly, two hundred tickets, and some said they could get them, some said they couldn't. Whatever. It was shown live on YouTube for anybody to watch. And like you said, keyboard warriors were nowhere to be seen. No surprise was me there, to be quite honest, because um, it's probably been past their bedtime. Uh, but then the questions that they come out with, like you said, opportunity to ask sensible mm -hmm. questions. Some yeah. of them were sensible, but it, it was the wrong arena. Yeah. But then some of the stuff that they come out with, you cringed. You embarrassed well, I, I, yourself. I, I, I looked at Neil Collins' face and I felt for him. When when that question came out about Leia Secker and whose wife is he sleeping oh, with, Collins' really? face, you should have seen Neil Collins' face. He must have thought. It, it, it painted a thousand words. It was like, what the hell? Yeah. I've come here and you're asking stuff like that. Yeah. It was but this is mentality. This is mentality of some of them. It's, yeah. They make all the mouth to get in that opportunity to actually be face-to-face -to, -face to somebody. And incidentally, I thought Julianne Key... And, uh, oh, what's his name? It's gone out of yeah. my head now. Yeah. Nierav. Spoke yeah. really, really well. And I, thought Nier, as a, I thought Nirav was yeah, very good. I as thought he, honest he, as they could be. Yeah. And he but explained to, the Norwood situation really yeah. well. Um, yeah. Khalid was the typical politician and he wouldn't answer the question. But I thought Nirav was very good. I, I yeah. was impressed with how he actually come out with it. And, and, he, and what he said about the Norwood thing, I thought, right, you've yeah. put that to bed. Fair play. It's it's it and it's I I completely I completely agree with you too. I mean, like I just said, I've just come back from a week at the seaside, and whilst I've been there, I've seen every new shirt going. Lots of Sheffield Wednesdays. Yeah, but they weren't originals though, were they? <laughs> but there's but no nice there's... on them and Adidas. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just think we are now. It's September next week, and people. I've seen a few people asking for refunds. How much is it costing the club? And the only thing I wanted to see, which I didn't, I thought as a CEO, as a board member, and, and this is not for the old college, I would be raving that my fans have not got the shirts that they've paid for. I felt a little bit, they took that, there's nothing we can do. And, you know, we apologize and some people have vouched you for a one-off discount. And the thing is, though, and they should know, and Julian Key, especially in marketing, if you've got a bad experience, I had, if you have a bad experience by going to a shop or, or a purchase of something and you have a bad experience, you don't go back, do you? No. And, and, and as fans, you'll want the shirt, so next year you'll have to bite the bullet again. But I, I wanted to see a bit of anger coming from those board members yeah. about the shirts because it, 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 it's beyond a, a well, joke. How much almost. money has it cost them? Be honest. How much money has it cost them? Port Vale game. Everybody's down there, excited yeah. for new season. You've got people that's not been there before. That's the first time, and you're hoping it's going to be brilliant. And they want to come back, and they're queuing up for tickets for wherever. And then they're going into in club shop, and you'd expect to be walked in and be dazzled by all these new things, and it's all been revamped, etc., etc. And there's fuck all in it. <laughs> I, 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 but it's true. It's, it's an absolute yeah, disgrace. It's an because absolute yeah. disgrace. You know, I thought, and I know they can't help it. You win seven nil. How many people, if the shop would have been open with shirts, because that sets you up for the season, doesn't it? Announced promotion. I, oh, they'd have spent a fortune. Spent and, a fortune. And to have a club shop, and and I know because nobody's ever said why. There's nobody's come out and said uh, the problem is this. 
it, it, it feels, and it might be completely wrong, and I'm open to anybody, but it feels a bit like, have they been ordered a bit too late, maybe? Are the other 72 clubs or however, they, you know, are, are they, I don't but know. All these other football clubs have got their shirts out, and we're working with a company called Fanatics, who are well known for yeah. working in Number this one. environment. It's not like we've just, like, you know, when we when we got that sponsorship with Hex that went a bit wrong and, you know, you've, you've got... You've well, they sorted into... that quick enough, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, but it's just like, it, it's just, it's... it. My lad's still waiting. He paid 60 quid. He took it out within 60 seconds. He's still waiting. He, he, he's been told 8th of September. No, it's, it's disgrace. Absolute yeah. disgrace is what it is. And, 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 and they should be held account for it. But and Instead that's, of that's, just pushing it to one missing. side. That's what you say. You know, somebody should have been there and say, "Yeah, all right." You're saying that it's we apologise. You haven't got shirts, but why haven't you got shirts? Yeah. Everybody else. It's not as though it's some two bit two bit manufacturer of shirt. It's actually a well known brand. It's pure. So you can't tell me that these shirts weren't ordered probably twelve months ago. They might. And, it might be like that. They might know well, what designs they're going to have. So we're it, ever. It's it, listen, and and things might have changed, but in the time of a previous CEO, and I'm going back to Bad Mansford and Gautier and I, you know, they used to say the shirts normally get decided like halfway in the season. You need to get yeah. everything out because all the clubs are getting. You know what I mean? Um, and they're going to be. I tell you where they are. They're in a garage in Mexbra. This is where they are. They'll be piled <laughs> up, and somebody will be selling them out at back of the garage in Mexbra. They're all anybody, Wednesday fans. There. Anybody is, well, can I have one? Can I have a black one if anybody's listening? But it's, um, you know, I, I remember the days when it was open day and that's when you got your shirt and everybody in the sun or, well, you hope it was sunny, walked around in your new shirt. And yeah, it's just, it's a bit of I an old you there, didn't I, it? I, that was the I point. Had, it got you there. It got yeah, you there. On, you had a reason that, to that go. That was the idea. The you unveiling. wanted to see what shirt were going to be. Yeah. yeah. But and, there's and also, I, I, I've seen people say that they've been in the, the, the club shop this week and it's just bare. I mean, I don't know. I yeah. can't say. I, I've not been in myself. But are they running that down? What what, what What's the crap we have? Because even if they've not got the, the, the first team shirts on sale, why have they not got like new T-shirts, new track, track suits, new tops, new sportswear, something else that you can wear? Because it's easier with... to sell over internet, isn't it? You yeah. don't need a shop. It cuts out that amount. And then they can, they can charge you stupid money mm. for postage and handling fees and then they give a little bit of ten percent off, but then they take it back in other ways. So it just it just makes it a complete farce. Yeah. And and I have to say, I get you know, I I because they did say the shirts would be available in the shop, which which is a blessing because there's a lot of our fan base a little bit older might not be as familiar with ordering things on the internet. They might not trust that process of you know giving you bank details and everything else. So yeah, I I just missed. I I I honestly I watched because I thought somebody would come out and say you know what. We are absolutely disgusted that this has happened, and we've had meetings, and it was just, yeah, we're really, really sorry. And it, it felt like they took ownership of the fact, like it was because of them. And, and, and maybe it's not, but that's how it felt. And, mm. yeah, I felt a bit let down, I'll be honest. Um, I think you, you can ask about, like we said, the tea, coffee, or the toilets. You can also ask, oh, somebody is sleeping with... But in the middle of the questions, we all wanted to hear, and, and nobody sort of no. came with it. Um, the bloke asking about the car park, mate, I get it, but last season was the same. And when a safety group says, this is how it has to happen, it's not Khaled that says this, and I'm not defending Khaled, but last year was the same. When it, I've said it to you, Steve, when we've both been to the match and I've done commentary and I'm parked in the yeah. main car park and I ring you, where are you? He says, oh, I've just got home. He says, oh, I'm still waiting for the gates to open. I know about it. Yeah. I park, I take That's that, it. I know yeah. I'm going to have to wait. And I get it might not be nice. I'll tell you what would be best, what would be better for you, Carlo, is if they kicked off quarter of an hour earlier on a night match. I'm going to now ask That would be a right good idea, that. Just in case anybody's got to get to work, <laughs> kick off just that little bit early. Oh, no, that were another stupid question, weren't it? <laughs> what are these people thinking about? Do you know well, what I mean? I'm sorry, I'm not most intelligent person myself, but Christ. I know. I know. Unbelievable. To, to finish then on a positive note. Um, oh, go for a change. <laughs> well, you know, we might as well. Um, the transfer period finishes if nobody else comes in and if nobody else leaves. So let's say kitchen stays, style stay, and nobody got a loan. Can we get, uh, 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 you know, can we get a, a, a grade from you? How do you see this transfer period? We knew. Things had to happen when Norwood left, obviously, when, when Anderson left. 
where, how do you judge that the club have done in this transfer, in this summer, with a week to go? I'll, I'll be honest, for now, I'll give them a seven. I think we can do better, mm. but I think we've addressed the areas that needed addressing. Maybe strength in depth could be a little bit better in certain positions. Ian, how do you how do you grade it? Similar, similar. It's it's good, but could do better. I think Liam Roberts is a, is a positive. Bringing him in goal, he's a great goalkeeper. Uh, Lapata looks good. Uh, O'Keefe looks good. Um, the playing Cotter now. I know he came later, but you know playing Cotter now. Um, McAtee can maybe may, maybe the answer. Um, but you'd have liked a little bit more quality, League One quality. But like I said, some of those names I've mentioned have hit the ground running quite well. So yeah, not not too bad. A good seven from me, yeah. Yeah. Steve. Yeah, probably seven eight. Um, we knew we, ne we were never going to be spending big money. We say every season we'd rather have two quality players than four there or thereabouts players. But like like Ian says, he's, he's named already players that's come in, that's done a good job. Uh, Shepherd today, uh, Nathan James, when he's played. It is Nathan James, isn't it? I was getting mixed up with Banana Rama song. Um, you know, these, well, it's true. He's been gone too long, that lad. Um, <laughs> they brought strikers in. You can't say they've not. They brought three strikers in. So that's what we asked for. They brought three strikers in. Dallas yeah. has yet to prove himself. Waters has yet to prove himself. But to be honest, McAtee's yet to prove himself. All right, he had a decent debut today and scored a goal. But they have strengthened, actually, when you look at it, in the areas that we wanted. I'd like to see another midfielder come in, I must admit. Uh, and that would be, for me, where the quality is, because I still think we lack somebody and Kane's not the answer I don't care what anybody says we still lack somebody who can play the killer ball Kane tries yeah but completely agree. I, he just he just I just have a question Phillips yeah. can't do it if we, and if we Connell, Connell's not there to do it so no um and I think uh Russell Connell are deeper players Kane can be a deeper midfielder uh Phillips is a bit more forward but he doesn't do it you want somebody who can open defenses up and yep. thread a ball for Cole or whoever it is, and we're missing that that midfield magician, so, so to speak. They're all very good in their own right, but somebody who can unlock defences. Our threat comes from the wings. That's yeah. where our threat sometimes comes from. Cotter on, on one side and Cadden on the other. We need that midfield maestro, so to speak. That that would top it off nicely. Yeah. But following 2-0 win away at Wigan, renewed optimism for Barnsley fans as they take on Cheltenham Town away next week. You have been listening to the Reds Report with Ian, Steve and myself. We are proud to be part of the Talk Sports Fans Network and we'll be back next week. Thanks for listening. <laughs>